I'm here guys, I'm just uh, up here in the, you know, beautiful mountains of Colorado and uh, that got a free X5. It doesn't run, seems to have zero compression and uh, he's loading it on the trailer. Yeah, we're fucking good at this shit. Natural. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> stuff off and we'll get at the shop and uh, we'll see what we'll get up to today. So uh, hope you guys are doing good. We're a flexor. The Pathfinder's made it all the way to the top of this. I don't know if the Suburban can do it. The Avalanche. Avalanche, god damn it. This is the uh, 69th have terrain park. We've got a mud pit over there. You can see it's on the roof. And... You're doing burnouts this time. Four wheel drive. Never tried the four wheel drive. Open four wheel drive. Quarter yeah. in the low. Yeah, you're just three wheel in there. Go through the mud pit. I'm trying to get stuck. I'm trying to get him stuck. Dude, this is a mud pit and a half. This is some Florida wetlands. That shit's thick. Yeah. He's gonna get stuck. He's either gonna get stuck or very dirty. He might get stuck. Wait, let me roll up this window. <laughs> you might. My trip my Montero almost got stuck. Really? You almost got stuck? I'm definitely gonna get stuck. Well have fun. He is. He is gonna get stuck. Yeah. I mean, the execution was there. It's so fucking loud. It is. He's not gonna get stuck. Why do you need to be stealthy when you can sell your cat? Okay, shit. That was the coolest thing you've done in a while. You got mud on my shit. The avalanche so doesn't care. That was really cool. Yeah, it does smell it bad. Like just screaming too. <laughs> oh god, that's reeks. <laughs> that's like no one sewage. Said mud was clean. Yeah, this is like sewage. I definitely thought I was getting stuck in the mud. Um, so did Zach, so did Hamish, but uh the old avalanche made her happen. Um, but now we're up north, we're about, I don't know, 10 miles north of the shop, took the interstate, which is still just chilling. Still about three quarter tank of fuel, this thing's just great. Um, where we go see our buddy Alex and Glenn Shelley. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Alex or seen Alex or heard of Glenn Shelley. Pretty much anytime you search like a BMW on Google and you go to images and you see like a really nice example and it's like in an airplane hangar with like a little reddish white plane behind it. Those, all those picks are on shelf. Yeah. They, uh, they sell a lot of cool cars. They sell them on uh, Bring a Trailer. They sell them locally on Craigslist. They're it's cool guy. You can find them on their website. But uh, I gotta go pick up some wheels that are up here, and then also some E30 plastic bumpers. So thought I'd take you guys along for the ride and see what cool stuff they got in the hangar. That you Do people don't like me? 
people on YouTube don't like you? They don't like me. Why? <laughs> I don't, some people do. Yeah. I bet our people would like you. Our people are like adults. Yeah, your people probably like you. Yeah. 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 My, I aged out of YouTube. Like when I gained 10 pounds, got gray hair, and broke my collarbone. That's when I transitioned from YouTube to writing. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people are like, are like over 40. They like watch yeah. our stuff. Yeah, like yeah. They think we're smart. Like I don't think that we're not smart. <laughs> um, is it cool M5? No greed last year. Cost way too much money. It's crazy. It's crazy what these cars have done. Exactly. Some some weird beetle here. Yeah, I mean, really, I think it's probably the rarest part here is this one. Like, when do you ever see an IX Touring? And when do you ever see an IX Touring that's not just haggard? So is it, is it a 25 then? It's 25 exempt. It came from a car. No, 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 a B25. Yeah, it's the same. Everything's the same as the uh, US IX. Because you never see 325i wagons. No. No, they, the uh, IX Touring only came with the 325, and then, uh, you know, they all went to the northern climate, so, like, you always see them, you just don't ever see them not rusty, and, you know, if people preserved them, like, wagons in general, right, like, wagons people use, that's the beauty of a wagon, right. you know, like, my M5 wagon, I used the shit out of it, I'd, like, deliver parts and pieces in it, and, like, have a dog, it Alex, was awesome. Alex used to have a big one of Isla 34 <laughs> It's, like, one of my favorite cars. And then, uh, so like same thing for the IX, you know, people would use those and then even preserve like the design edition. But this being like a clean IX, like you just never see it. So when we got it, it came with like crappy wheels. Uh, so I had these. They're stock wheels. They're stock, they're uh, Chris's old wheels. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, Nagara weaves. And then, uh, and then I, I don't know where I got the headlights from. I had those stashed, but. We put the, the French smileys in them. And I told the guy I sold it to last, like, man, you know, good luck finding a set of those in that condition. Like, you should, like, laminex them or just swap them out if you're going to use it in the winter. But he did. The guy that I, I sold this to last races in an E30 M3, and he's got a spec E30. And uh, they just took really good care of it. And I want to keep it, of course. But... Uh, I don't want to keep everything that comes Alex in Alex has a bad habit of buying everything back or taking it on trade after he sells it. So I do. Well, he owns the same car like 10 times. I really do. Like the record, <laughs> I think the record's five times. And I've only been doing this like six years professionally. So that's like once a year we get the same car back. <laughs> but, you know, you know they're good when you get them back. Sometimes... Sometimes, too, people will take them and they'll take them a bit too far, and I'm like, no, nope, I don't want that one back. <laughs> don't bring me that one back. You've owned that one a little too yeah. much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Supercharged NSX. Two claps. Yeah, 46 parts cars. Yeah. yeah, actually, man, this one, this thing's awesome. This was a, uh, I would have kept this one. It's just. I mean, it's a sport package, I guess. It's a, just a plain old 330 uh, pre-facelift, but it's a five-speed, and it had 80,000 miles. And it's like this, you know, there's so many cars, right? There's a generation of people that have never seen a nice E46, because they've just, they've all been used, you know? So it's like, when you see one that's not something necessarily special, it's almost more special because it's like, Why did somebody who that? preserves a gray on gray, <laughs> three oh early pre facelift, you know XI, right? Like, yeah. and then when we get them, it's like, dude, I'm gonna like, I'm almost more excited about this than like the the NSX. Yeah, almost. But, that, but that's just you, Alex. Like, yeah, you want to buy like the weird quirky like yeah. 1991 Toyota, like, <laughs> dude, I love them. I love like an all track. There's one I'll fucking our... leave dinner to go get an Alltrack. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Corolla Alltrack in our yard right now. A tree fell on it. You know, I got in a in a, a like a road rage incident in a '91 Corolla Alltrack in Boulder on the uh, Foothills Parkway with a woman angrily wielding a yoga mat in her Subaru Outback, and the Corolla Alltrack's like the slowest Corolla there is because it's a wagon and it's an Alltrack. So I was like banging that thing off the red lighter in like this the slowest race ever and this woman was just like like sh like shaking her yoga mat at me and she like 
angrily beat me and I was like, dude, you just came from yoga. You should be cool. Like, you <laughs> should be cool. Track. Yeah. You could get over. You can merge later. I'm sorry that I'm slow. I'm enjoying myself. Got the mileage. Yeah. Yeah, this, I, I'm looking forward to fixing this one. And the funny thing is, I mean, I think the beauty of like, kind of what we do here is like, we find these ones that most of the world takes for granted and then just make them nice. And then we find that one person that's it's like, like, oh, I had dude. one of these 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah, he's like, hell yeah, I want that car. That's kind of been like, that's kept us alive, <laughs> you know? But. Ooh, but there's no hatch on that. You can go show what's in the back of that. Um, yeah. Probably an engine. Well, yeah, but now it's, on top of the engine. It's got the best accessory you can do to these. The uh, Comtec one? It's Comtec. And it's actually, it. Yeah. so like the, the downfall to the early NSX uh, was the gearing. Mm. So they got the top speed. And then by putting the blower on it, you know, really what you should do is re-gear it. And you don't need the blower. And you don't, but. They're the, not very easy to re-gear. They're not. I mean, it's, it's astronomically expensive. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but the blower is nice. Like second gear really does give you everything you need. And then when the blower kicks, you know, it's nice. I'm not a turbo guy. Like I like, I like linear power delivery and the blower is like super linear. Can you just put a six speed in one of these and fix the gear? Yeah, you can. Like there, there's a bunch of different kits you can do, but, um, but you know this with the regeared. I had the opportunity to buy one of these. Oh, but this is a later one, though. It's got a color loop. It's it it's it. So it may have been painted, but I think it's it's still five speed. It's still you know pre ninety seven. Yeah. So it's in that like zone after the early ones, yeah. but still the uh, the three liter. No, it's definitely been painted. Yeah, th this car is like kind of the one that I'd have as well. Like it's got some. It's got the blower. You know, it's 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 not original. Like it's it's had some panels cool. done. The exhaust is cool. It's got a Type R hood. You know, um, it's got wheels that actually fit instead of like NSX wheels that are like. Yeah, I'm not in love with these wheels. Um, no, they're not beautiful, but I mean, they're period. The stock NSX wheels are like yeah. back here and like this. Short. Like La Land Rover Defender, tall and skinny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's like the 1716 Stagger, and they're like yeah. still not big. <laughs> I, you know, you know what's funny is like just driving around like i drove this to denver in the gold the other day and i'll drive like any of the 911s like i'll drive my 911 with gold bbs wheels you know that like people just shit themselves when they see never gets posted on facebook but this like, one was all over this you like go spouse. down there to get gas and it gets posted twice <laughs> you know and it's like and then people are like is that a corvette and then people are like, NSXs are slow. Those are the two <laughs> things that people always say. <laughs> but like, you really, you know, you really can't, it just oozes of like 90s radness, like of all the 90s rad cars. Well, I'm like, it's the I'm, peak. Japan was killing it in the 90s. Yeah. But there was nothing like this. No. Like this. No. One. It was like 10 years yeah. of development to make this. And by the time they made it, it was already kind of obsolete because the rest of the world had moved on, but it stayed relevant because it was so good. And the seating position is just so wild. Like you're like laying yeah. down yeah. practically. Yeah, and you're surrounded by like yeah. that big 90s console. Yeah, the, yeah, way up here in that little tiny yeah. short shifter. That well, with my ball. collarbone, the great thing is like I can, with a broken collarbone, I can be like click, 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 it's click. The it's the like the perfect shifter. brace. It's great. Yeah. 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 You can't drive an NSX without just feeling special too. Like it's not, it's not a car where you're like, ooh, look at me. Mm -hmm. It's not like an egocentric car. It's really like you kind of immerse yourself into like what made that car special mm -hmm. and appreciate it rather than like, you know, some of the supercars, like the, especially like a modern Lamborghini, it's just like, whatever, that's just a cock and, driving along. And, and they're kind of hard to drive. Like, yeah. like they can get like sideways. They get sideways. So, yeah. so that bridge, that uh, exit from 70 north on I-25, like. You're talking with the black one, right? Yeah, like, there's a couple like, yeah. you know, bump steer areas there where you want to unload and hit it straight. And with my wife, like we hit one of those and I knew it was going to come and I just wanted to feel it. So I let it offset and kind of held the angle, the slip, and then just throttle steered it through. And it, it was scary because there was consequences, but at the same time, it was like, no, it's being honest. Like, it's like yeah. an E30, it's telling me, but I wouldn't want to let it go any further. And I certainly would have done that without like lots of buildup to that, mm -hmm. you know, 
I think that killed many of the NSX yeah. when their kid got it. <laughs> yeah, if you guys don't know, I, uh, I taught myself I'd drive a manual transmission in one of these that I took without permission from my dad. So, <laughs> that's why that. I know about them. <laughs> don't do that, kids. <laughs> I wouldn't have kids to watch this. <laughs> yeah, we somehow appeal to that demographic. Or yeah, like that's probably safe. Well, it's because you got to check the not for kids box. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's it. And we drink beer. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. We, cool. Came, we came and looked at like not BMWs, but there's cool ones. There's Alex's race car. Yeah. There's M Cooper, the S52, but then you got another one to replace it with an S54. Well, that's S54 too. Well, I thought it was S52. No, it's S54. It's oh. number 593 of the 690. You sure it's not 368? <laughs> 368 <laughs> was the E36 8, which is oh, why that's what my number is. I like it. Yeah. But it's also, it's been like a little bit too precious for, you know, I've, I've reached the point where I personally am probably not going to move any further in, in uh, improving the driver car system with the way that it's set up. So it came time to drill holes and it was a little too precious to drill holes too. So I kind of stumbled into this one and which had already been pre-drilled. And from what we know, it's the only one that was like semi-factory supported, uh, allegedly, um, from Spartanburg. When it, it's never been a street car, it's always been a race car. So all the fancy bits, the go fast bits off this are going to go into this, and then uh, and then I'll campaign it in NASA or BMW CCA time trials, and whoever else will have me. And I still don't think it'll be very fast. It's just a flawed platform to try to win races in but you know what it's fucking, but you look really cool it's dude. fucking cool man yeah, it's like, good look looking at Coop and it, i'll tell you what like on the track like it's got a menacing uh presence to it like even in that lane like you can roll up on a on somebody in a much superior car who's probably even like a, a potentially better driver and make a move because you you put a little pressure on them like fill their mirrors with this and they're like oh shit I don't know. What, what yeah fuck that I'm getting out of here well and like look where you're sitting you know you pull up like you know door to door with them you're yeah. already ahead yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you can touch the rear wheel yeah. from the from the uh, driver's seat there's a bunch of guys but I warn you like when I was like oh you can touch the rear wheel from the driver's seat I did it and I was like <laughs> ah! <laughs> so make sure you know where you're gonna put your finger and then E30 M3 up there but yeah, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, how many E30 M3s do you see, right? Too yeah. many. <laughs> Another wagon, Snitzer wagon. It's where they come and cars like come and go in, in, in seasons. And they come and go in spurts, like we'll go months without having a ZHP or we'll go months without having an M3. And then boom, like, yeah, somebody just called me and they're like, hey, I wanna, I'm going to sell all my E30 M3s to one of them. And I was like, oh, man, that sounds like a lot of money, you know? <laughs> And even put, it, I want to sell all of my E30 M3s. Yeah, like I just have like a few just over here. Yeah, you know, so it's like, and every E30 M3, every one needs at Everything. least five grand to work, and yeah. usually it's ten. So it's like you're never gonna get one that's turnkey. Like they always need an engine out reseal, you know, or they need some incredibly rare bit. And that's how this one ended up. It's like he started that process. And we just need to finish it. Yeah, that was pretty clean in there now. It's clean, yeah. I mean, it's original, and it, the thing that this has that uh, makes it so much special is it's got the um, God, it's crimson. So Cardinal was the normal E30 interior, and that's a crimson one, which is a little bit darker. Hmm. So, and then there's Oxblood, right? Is one of them? Yeah, maybe it's Oxblood. Maybe that's what color it is. It's like a dark. It's much darker than Cardinal. It's like big red color. That's a lot of white. Color. Yeah. And then this is probably the fastest car in here. I mean, maybe the GT3 edges it out, but this has a, a uh, tuned 3.2, uh, Carrera 3.2. Like, look at the uh, long tube headers. Like, I've never got to drive it yet. That's another one we're just waiting to finish. Where makes like 300? Well, it's probably not that much. It's probably like. I don't remember what but the didn't three the 32s make. Didn't they make like 250? Yeah, they're like E36, yeah. like maybe not even that. Maybe like low twos, like 225. I don't know. A uh, 32, that's like 85. That was 84 to 89. Yeah. Yeah. I thought they made like 250. Maybe. I don't know. It seems high. But I, my SC makes like 
200. Like it's like a little bit faster than it, so maybe the net it'd be like in the like lower to like 220. What would you say, like a 79? It's an 82. Oh, right before. Yeah. I got it at 85, and I, 250 is what sticks in my head. Yeah, hey. I, I don't know, man. I, I can't wait to try it. Like, it's probably going to be a minute. That wheel fitment is interesting. <laughs> it's fat. <laughs> it's like not big, it's just like, it's, wow. Yeah. Like, it's just weird. It's like, why is it so wide? Yeah. And how do you make it even fit? Like it's it, there's no there's no space or anything. So there's a guy and I haven't seen him around. He used to come to a lot of track events that had one of these with the uh, with like an LS1 in it. And it would just stick out and the exhaust pipe came out the top and they merged into like a center two pipe stack on the top of the engine. And it just looked like space thrusters out the back, you know, and it was like maybe that much exhaust pipe on the whole thing. I bet that thing was fast, but it, horrible to It drive. was fast, man. He had like six inch fender flares on it, and uh, he beat me. Like, he would, I'd let him go by when I saw him coming. I bet he was just on the edge the whole time. <laughs> but yeah, and I haven't seen him, man. That was a cool car. Yeah, when, when I heal up, we'll, we'll get this out. See, I'd like to set, I'm at two minutes on, uh, on like burned up R comps in this, which is a respectable time, but, uh, but I haven't been able to repeat it. I've always been like 201, 202 and, uh, and I'm hoping like with, with, uh, Hoosiers and, uh, the MCS, like I could be in the like 156, 158 range, which really. I, you, That's you blind could, for 300 horsepower. It is. Like, I mean, you could do that in a nicely prepped, like a NASA GTS, you know, 3 E36, you can do that in. Um, but I, I, that's my goal is if I can get in, if I can hit 156, I'd be really happy with that. Um, but we'll see. They, they get real tail happy. It's like everything you don't want to do to a stable car, like make it super rigid, shorten the wheelbase, add a whole bunch of horsepower. And uh, and then you and know move everything off the front. Yeah, wheels. make it. Yeah, you know, sit on the rear axle. But I learned to drive in it too, so it's like I can get in that, and I can get in that, and it's really not that bad. <laughs> it's like come drive my car. It's fucking scary. You. <laughs> there's there's definitely some soil marks. <laughs> yeah, I can show you the skid marks on in the car that match the skid marks on the track. <laughs> I didn't see you guys there. Well, thanks for watching. I'm just gonna unload my avalanche. Uh, picked up a set of uh, these types of wheels. RCO 90s, or otherwise known as uh, V39 style fives. And uh, it's V30 plastic bumpers. So. That's what I got. Good haul from the Glen Shelley. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say E38 style fives. Superior. Nah. <laughs> um, Not even a competition. Well, I will say though, like those spokes are a little bit flatter, like almost concave. And these ones kind of go back to give it the bigger lip, kind of like the old style wheels. So mm. there's a little bit of. Not a big fan of the convex. Oh, yeah, convex. Yeah. Oh, not convex. Mm -hmm. But, well, cool. This has been a day. Yeah. So, uh, thanks for watching. Um, we're going to unload this. And then Hamish is going to give me a ride to go pick up a car. Okay. That I dropped off. And uh, I'm pretty excited to get it back. I think we'll start filming tomorrow's video today then. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Let's do it.